So while we're waiting for that water to boil, I want to show you another option in place of vegetable shortening. And I know this is really popular with cake pop decorators. These are called Paramount Crystals and they come in a couple of different brands, but they're designed to do exactly the same thing as shortening. They come in little sort of like flaked chips, so they do distribute a little bit more evenly and they melt a little bit faster than your spoonful of shortening. But I've tried both and I find they get the same result and the same flavour from either option, but these ones are about three times the price. So if you're looking at your bottom line, the shortening's definitely a better option. It's completely up to you and what's available where you are. Now that water should be boiling, we'll just check it. Perfect, that water's boiling. So exactly the same again, I wanna turn that heat off. And I'm gonna take the Nestle morsels that are my favorite ones to use here, and we'll just tip them in. I'm such a white chocolate fan, I absolutely love white chocolate. All right, the heat's off. Once again, we're gonna stir those little morsels until they're melted. So you'll see there you are getting a bit more resistance and that's more resistance to melting than what you'll get out of the Nestle melts and also out of the candy melts. But I have experimented with these ones and they do melt quite nicely. If you wanted them to melt a tiny bit faster, if you're a little bit impatient, you could add a spoonful of shortening and it will speed up the process. Perfect, so that white chocolate has melted and you can see there from our consistency, once again comes straight off the spoon, which is exactly what we want. Now if you're going to colour white chocolate, you wanna take it off the heat because we don't wanna heat that up anymore once it's melted, but you do want the residual heat from the bowl to actually keep it warm while you're colouring it. So don't be tempted to transfer it into your next container, into a glass bowl, into your dipping container, until after it's coloured because as soon as you move it into a new container, it will start to cool down. Once it starts to cool down, it will start to set around the edges and on those edges, your colour won't take. So I'm gonna show you just how to use a powder colour today. I'm gonna to go with some yellow. I do like the powder colours. They aren't all that accessible, but I think they're pretty cool to see in action. So you just tip a little bit of your powder in and it depends on how vibrant you want your colour. And always using that towel just so that you don't burn yourself. You can see there your nice little smattering of powder colour on top, it's as simple as stirring it through. With the powder colours you do want to make sure that you give it a really, really good stir because sometimes little tiny, tiny chunks of them stay in there undispersed if you haven't stirred them all the way through. You might be able to see there, I've already got some of that white chocolate starting to harden around the edges of the bowl. If that happens, just pop it back on the heat and continue to stir. Some of the advantages of colouring your own white chocolate, apart from the taste of your white chocolate fan, but the advantages mean that you can actually choose your colours a little bit better. So if you wanted to match a chocolate to a fondant colour, or really be a little bit picky about the shades, and you can't find the shade in a candy melt, then colouring white chocolate is for you. I will mention, when it comes to colours of candy melts, like dark green, red and black, I always buy them pre-coloured. So I either use the Wilton or the Merkins, but I never try to colour colours that are that dark myself. I find I never get the richness of colour. So if I want a lighter green, I'll colour that myself. But if I want that really dark forest green, I'm gonna buy that in a pre-packaged, pre-coloured melt, just because you need too much food colouring and you will change the consistency of your chocolate if you try to attempt that dark of a colour on your own. Perfect. So all of that colour's mixed through and what we have there is some beautiful, fluid, lovely yellow melted white chocolate. Perfect consistency for dipping your cake pops. Now if you were to use your candy colours, your Americolor colour colours or even your colour pastes, you would just be adding in just a drop at a time, stirring it through until you get the colour that you like. I hope that this has shed some light on the cake pop chocolate coating consistency concerns of a lot of you guys out there. This has been one of my most requested videos. So I really wanted to make something that would hopefully explain away all of the issues that you guys are having with thick candy melts and chunky candy melts and with thinning them out and really bringing your cake pops to the next level. I hope you've enjoyed this video and as always, thanks for tuning in to My Cupcake Addiction.